bit of a commentary. I was uh, watching something on Karen Strahan about this particular video here, and so I'm just going to get right into it. Now, this is Brie Esrig. She's got her own YouTube channel, and she is uh, here with a little thing called My Sexual Assault Story NSFW, you know, not safe for work. I thought that we'd listen to a little bit of it together. Maybe we'll skip through some of it. You can go see the entire thing under Brie Esrig, B-R-E-E-E-S-S-R-I-G, -E -E you know, under My Sexual Assault Story NSFW, if you're interested in seeing the entirety of it. Let's go ahead and let her start this off just for us here. Trigger warning. We're going to be talking about some highly sensitive sexual stuff, sexual assault, abuse, rape, things like that. So if you are not comfortable, please click off of this video because I am going to share my sexual assault stories, plural, unfortunately. I'm going to start with... Okay, now, my sexual assault stories, plural, unfortunately, the way she... It feels like she almost has made these other ones that weren't quite even close to a sexual assault, even though the first one is public indecency, into sexual assaults. Now, let's just keep going here. First story, which is the most recent story, and I've been putting off talking about all, right. all of these for just a really long time. I'm going to go ahead and... I was scared, I guess, uh, but I sort of over the last year, I... She was scared, she guesses. Let's go ahead and keep that in mind. Worked on myself a lot, and honestly, I have a platform on YouTube. I have a lot of you have chosen to subscribe to my channel, for which I'm very grateful. And I think not speaking up about stuff like this is a damn shame. I I think I have this platform, and the reason I do is so that I can try to help other people and so I would like to use my channel my social media accounts for both entertainment purposes and also because I want to share and I want you as a viewer to know that a you're not alone so many people experience stuff like this and, and b let, let's take the stigma off of all of it okay so first off this would be a really really inspirational speech. This would really mean something and this would have a lot of value if what was coming next was not so... I don't want to say classless, but I want to say misunderstanding of kind of the words and kind of the meaning behind sexual assault, behind the meaning behind what it is to be sexually assaulted. Who is sexually assaulted and what does sexual assault mean? How does someone be sexually assaulted? What is the, the codifiers and you can go look up all these things as comment sections you know will say over and over again that you can look up what sexual assault means the defined laws and then that's a good place to start and I'll agree with that but I mean so so far it sounds like she's about to tell us some really riveting dark things that you know are going to make it so that she has a point let's just say it like that why why should we have to hide and cower in shame we shouldn't that's true issues and problems that we're all facing every single day it's not our fault and so why are we not speaking up about it and so that's what it's not our fault okay now this is uh relatable slightly to the first story but she did have other things she could do to change the potential outcome and the other two stories i feel like it was entirely her fault it's not that she was raped or anything along those lines if you listen to the story, and we will go over them briefly, you're going to find that what I just said was true, that it was potentially her fault, that in situations where a woman has tried to kiss me and I did not want to kiss her, we didn't kiss. That is how things worked out. All right, so let's just allow her to kind of, let, let's allow her to open up before we, we try to close her down or shut her down. Because, you know, you may be already hearing me and saying that I'm probably a crass individual that doesn't know what he's talking about. So let's just keep on going here. Where I'm coming from. Oh, shh. This is a stream, uh, but that's okay. As a victim of sexual assault, I'm going to begin this first story. And I'm going to start by saying that if you are a victim of sexual assault, it's not your fault. I don't care what anyone says. It's not your fault. This happened last September. 
if you are a victim of sexual assault, let me be clear, it's not your fault. It isn't. There may be factors that you could say you could have prevented, but if you are a true victim of sexual assault, let me be clear, it, it isn't your fault. It is the fault of the assaulter. I was living by myself in a one-bedroom apartment in a fairly large apartment complex, and honestly, I didn't really know any of my neighbors at all. Um, everyone just kind of passed by, and I, for some reason, met my next door neighbor when we were walking down the street and he said that he had seen me around and something I could tell was off about him, just like the way he was walking and slumped over and I just... Okay, so first off, she's made several opinions about this human being before she's talked about him in any real way, nor before she's really gotten to know him. I just knew. You just know. Like, you have... Always trust your gut, guys, seriously. Uh, my dog would bark at him. My dog has barked at a million people. He barks at the young neighbor kid that comes over, and I know that there's nothing wrong with that young man. Okay. I'm sorry. Every time we saw him on the street, um, there was just something off. And I found out that he lived right next door to me, literally like a door over. Okay? Okay. So I did not know that before. And... Is there a problem with him living next door or living potentially three doors down or another floor away? I'm not sure. I just don't know. Up more and more and he would he would ask me to hang out with him. Here is a normal time where a social cue could be put in. I'm a man. I don't know a woman. But I saw her and I know she lives right next to me. I think to myself, you know what would be fun is if I got to know this woman, so I'm going to try and ask her out. I'm going to try on some level to get to know her. All right, so he would ask her out. I always say, oh, you know what, I'm really sorry, I'm just busy. Oh, you know what, I'm really sorry, I'm just busy. Let me tell you how many times I've told that to a woman that I'm not interested in. I'm thinking, oh, I'm sorry, I'm not busy. I wonder if there's another way you classify that so that it was clearer. Because it sounds to me like you're saying maybe. You know what the opposite of maybe is? It's not yes, it's no. You say there's a 50% likelihood that it will happen or a 0% likelihood that it would happen. You are saying that there is a 50% likelihood that it would happen with a maybe answer. You should have clearly said no. Especially with your gut freaking out over it. Boyfriend, even though I didn't. Stuff like that. And so, which I shouldn't have had to do. But honestly, I just felt weird around him. And it got to the point where he would be able to hear that I was home the wall. So he could hear that you were home through the wall, as could your other neighbor. And so he would come over to my apartment and knock on the door, and I would sit in... Now, most normal people, when their neighbor comes over to knock on the door, they would open it and then say hello. If they were uncomfortable with their neighbor coming over and knocking on the door, what they would normally do is open the door and say, listen, I'm busy and I don't want to speak to you, or listen, I don't know you and I would prefer you not knock at my door, or listen, I am not interested in seeing you right now, and I maybe, I, maybe I'm interested in seeing you later, maybe, but not right now. But a clear no would make it so that you were establishing your presence. You were saying, do not knock on this door, it is mine. Okay. Let's all back up a second. What? Not to be home because he would knock. I just felt weird around him, and it got to the point where let's just let's just hear this again. Would be able to hear that I was home through the wall.
wall. And so he would come over to my apartment and knock on the door and I would sit in my kitchen holding a knife, pretending not to be home. She would sit in her kitchen holding a knife. Was she this afraid for her life in a large apartment building with her next door neighbor being the potential assaultant with a locked door in between him and her and with nothing more than gentle knocking to let her know that somebody was at the door. Not pounding, not, hey, are you in there? Gentle knocking. Because he would knock. Now wait, he would knock. What do you think he's going to do next? Start pounding on the door and yelling to see if she's home? What would a normal person do when they knocked at the door, knowing that somebody was probably home, but maybe they didn't hear them knock? You know, if I'm in my bathroom in my house and somebody knocks on my front door, I may not hear them. You know what an intelligent person would do the second time? What, what, what they would do after they didn't get a response when they someone knocked? Let's, let's find out what a normal person would do. And then wait. Two minutes would go by. Then I would hear a knock again. Oh, so you mean he thought maybe you were somewhere where you couldn't hear the knock, and two minutes later he came back and decided to try to find out whether you were within earshot so that he could actually talk to you? And it would just go on. Into or him, room. her, it, whatever. And say, I'm really busy right now. It would eventually keep going on until she would answer the door and say, Oh, sorry. He's How many times did he knock before this potential opening the door happened? Was it just for the second time? Or would he knock? Why did you not go to the door with a knife in your hand? Why not just send a clear message that says, hey, listen, I'm really, really uncomfortable and I'm kind of scared of you. I actually have a knife in my hand right now because I am afraid for my life. Would you please stop bothering me in total and in particular? Seems pretty rational. He somehow found me on Twitter. I don't... He somehow found her on Twitter. I didn't tell him my last name. I wonder if your last name was on your mailbox at your apartment building. I wonder if... B, whatever your last name is, B with a fucking period, and then your last name was sitting there right next to his fucking mailbox because they were probably right next to each other because you guys are in the apartments that are right next to each other. How hard would it be? I, I'm not trying to justify what this person does later, all right? I'm just trying to say that what he was doing initially was not so far off of the fucking beaten path, and maybe that's why she shouldn't have felt so odd about it, and maybe that's why... What ends up occurring ends up occurring. I don't know how he found me. <sighs> That's the scary part. And um, he did. The point is he did, and he started tweeting me. And I started saving the screen. I started taking screenshots of the stuff he tweeted me, just to have. I don't know. I've always been. You're also a large personality on YouTube to some extent, with 250,000 view or subscribers. You know. Maybe, I mean, I know that this was a personal thing, and it, I just don't see how she can be so offended by someone tweeting her. Very paranoid, um, and so that's something that I did. One morning, I woke up very early to walk my dogs. All right, now, she woke up very early at 7 a.m. to walk her dogs. Um, it was about 7 a.m. I've heard this before. And I opened my door, and... I'm walking my dog outside, and I slammed my door shut, and I hear... You slammed your door shut. Why was that important to say that she slammed her door shut? This is something that kind of weirded me out the first time. Hey, and I turn around, and he's standing there. And... He's standing there in his boxers. Now, how far away is his apartment door from yours? Did he just step outside of his apartment when he did that? Did he hear you slam the door and that's why he stepped out? Or was he really boxers. waiting there for you so like you think? Obviously been waiting for me. In his boxers in a hallway. Really? In his boxers in a hallway he was waiting for you. Come outside. Come outside into the hallway of the apartment building? And was he right next to his door when that happened? And I turn around and I'm in shock that I have to see him standing there with his boxers. And I say, hi. And he says, do you want to come over and watch a movie with me? Here is another interesting opportunity for this woman to fully reject this man. 
Let's find out whether she takes that opportunity. To me. And I said, I can't, I have to go. I can't, which implies that if she didn't have something to do, then she would. That is the implication of the language. She doesn't have to speak in such a way. To go to work right now. And at that point, he had started to stick his hand down his pants and... At that point... At that point, after you had rejected him very, very blandly. Play with himself. And then he exposed himself to me and started. He goes to grab it himself while he's talking to her. Then, after playing with himself for a moment, he exposes himself. How did he get to the exposing portion before she says something? I, I, I don't remember so this completely. I was standing there frozen, and I was like, what the fuck do you think you're doing? And he, and he said, I want to fuck you. And I ran. I ran with the dogs. I... You know what would have been an interesting thing to do right now? To tell him, I don't want to fuck you. I don't want to fuck you. I'm sorry. Not only that, but I find this semi-inappropriate. I understand that I haven't been giving you simple cues to tell you to fuck off, but I don't want to fuck you. How hard is that? As an adult person to another adult person, how hard is it to say, I don't want to fuck you? Alright? She ran off. Did he run after her? Did, he, did she think he ever had the intention on trying to attack her in any kind of sexual way? Or was this indecent exposure at the worst? And maybe at the best, it was a really, really bad come on that was not thought of very well. And um, he was maybe drunk. You know, maybe there's some secondary cause for why he was acting so completely batshit crazy. Now, we'll find out later in the video that, in fact, he wasn't acting batshit crazy for no reason. And uh, I hope, I, I realize I'm streaming this right now, and I hope Twitch or I hope my normal viewers aren't watching this because I just meant to be recording it. But we'll find out later that, you know, oh, well, let's just, let's just do it. I ran to the office of my apartment building, and for some reason, my first instinct was to go on Twitter to see if he had tweeted it. My first instinct was to go on Twitter. That should never, ever be your first instinct in any situation where you feel threatened. Anything to me, and he had. So at he had. o'clock that morning, he had tweeted. Oh, I wonder whether he had been drinking all night thinking about you. And then he heard your door slam. Then he walks outside, slightly drunk, in his boxers and then makes a very bad decision about whether or not he should be touching himself and coming on to you in such an aggressive way. I wonder. I'm not saying that that's right or wrong, but I'm saying that her lack of empathy for this other human being seems so completely... I don't know. Do you want to come hang out and watch a movie with me? And I took a screenshot of it. So from four... I'm speechless. 4 o'clock to 7 a.m. He had been waiting for me to get up and, and leave. So she knows that! And, um, and she can't empathize at all? She doesn't understand? We were very helpful. I had a detective on the case come to find out that this man, because he, he's a man, not a boy, he's over the age of 21, I don't understand why that clarification was made. Why would it be better if he was a boy? It would still be at the same level of indecent exposure and disturbing content. <laughs> or was it just so she could say the word man? I, I don't know. Uh, this man had exposed himself to other women in my building before. And they do <sighs> charges 
therefore the building didn't have to evict him. And they also chose not to notify his neighbors or anyone else in the building. Because he's not a sexual offender, because he wasn't convicted of a sexual offense. Why would they be able to go around and slander somebody's good name when there isn't a reason to? These two women didn't apply any charges, so therefore he wasn't an offender on any level. Oh my god. He's not even a sexual offender for you. If he was doing if you were a child, he might, you know, be turned into, you know, a uh what do you what do you call it? Uh the sex crime registry or whatever, you know. So that happened. I said, screw it. I am pressing charges. I'm taking him to court. I also found out that he had gotten kicked out of the military for similar behavior. So and obviously so this said, man's hey, mentally unstable. Uh, if I don't do speak up about this now, it's going to happen to somebody else. And it still may happen to somebody else. And that's the part that... If this is all that's happening to somebody else, then hooray. If this is as far as any kind of rape culture ends up going with her, if if every woman that had a horrible rape story, if her rape stories were the three that we hear here, hooray for our society has gone fucking leagues ahead. Where one mentally unstable person bothered her, you know, and it's been found that he's done this several times and that the other people probably didn't press charges because they realized that he was mentally unstable. And that it was something outside of his control, almost like he didn't understand social cues to a point where he actually stayed up until 7 when he heard you go out, got out of his apartment, and then tried to come on to you. But having someone be so bad at social cues, does I, I love this, uh, her little cat face. Um, all right, let's just keep going. I don't want anyone to ever have to experience something like that. My like that. Let me explain to you what I think a bad sexual assault is. All right? I don't mean to be, you know, saying that yours is simple, but let me just put an image in your mind, dear viewer, dear Brie Esrig. I remember watching a documentary about prison, about the hardest prison in America. This man had just been sentenced to another three years. Do you know why he got sentenced to another three years? Do you think it's because he raped another man? No. No, it's not. It's because the nurse that was attending to him, he hit. Now, why did he hit the nurse that was attending to him? Was it because he was weak and angry and he was a misogynist? Or was it because of the repeated stab wounds, up to 18 stab wounds that he had all throughout his body, and his ass that was bandaged, that was bleeding? Bleeding from his rectum. Bleeding. Not a little bit. Stab holes all over his body and bleeding from his rectum. Now, those people that stabbed him and that raped him, they didn't get any more time. But he did get more time for basically lashing out at the only person weak enough that he could, which was the nurse, and he hit her once. And I think that that's abhorrent. I'm not trying to say anything good about that. That's abhorrent. But the point is that that's rape. That what you see in... Um, uh, L.A. Confidential with that young Mexican woman who had been tied to a bed and raped thousands, thousands is probably excessive, but thousands of seconds, how about that? Hundreds of t hundreds is even probably excessive too, but tens of times probably before the, in the Hollywoodized version of this thing that she was saved, right? <sighs> All right, let's just try and keep going, let's keep Wonderful going. My friend Jamie and her mother Brenda came with me to court and I am forever thankful because I wouldn't have been able to you wouldn't have been able to tell somebody that they showed their penis in front of you alone. How weak as a person are you? I had to sit next to him in court. I had to see his face. You had to see the face of a man who showed you his penis once. What if you went in chat roulette when it was first coming out and you saw some man's penis and then he went up and zoomed up to his face and said hey just in case you ever see me again this is the penis that you know raped your eyes of their innocence do you think that this woman has never seen a penis before in her life I don't know and go through like relive it oh what's that about I don't know why my window just stopped that's a little annoying the hell 
All right, well, son of a bitch, because I'm going to just go do this again. I didn't mean to be streaming this, and maybe it's because it's, you know, I don't know if this is copyrighted content or how any of that fucking shit works, but if that's why I don't have the image up, that's crazy. I don't know. I'm, I'm a little confused. I'm going to go look and see. Blah, 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 blah. Why in the fuck did you stop letting me? There we go. I have no idea what's going on with uh, OBS. Let's con try and continue here. Explain what happened. And, and fortunately for me, he was apologetic. So she barely had the strength to go and get this person who was apologetic and who didn't actually physically intimidate or assault her in any way. She finally had the strength because of her two friends to go and like see that this guy was was even jailed. We don't even know. And he would, he would com he complied with everything, and he said, "I deserve this." What did he I get? Know, deserve not, what? Have problems, and he was very open to it. And honestly, the only way I got that restraining order is because I had saved those tweets. The tweets were proof, and because nobody else in court that day had proof. I got my restraining order because of that. So Nobody else had proof. Were there more people there? So, A, I got this restraining order, but B, he was also ordered to mandatory counseling. It should be harder for stuff like this to happen. Did we notice that he wasn't kicked out of the apartment, by the way? She never said that he was kicked out of the apartment. Just to, just as a, just a clarifier. I'm appalled at my building for not doing anything. I think the fact that two other women had to experience this, and then someone before them, and then me, it shouldn't take that many times. One time should be enough for somebody to take this seriously. There are a lot of problems. One time should be enough for take this ser to take this seriously. In one time that he did it in the military, they kicked him out of the military. I think that's taking it pretty seriously. Because the other two women that you saw in a civilian setting decided that they didn't want to press charges because they realized this man was mentally unstable, you think that he should have been castigated as horrible and kicked out of the apartment? I don't understand where she's going with this. does not matter at all. You were out at night. Okay, first off, first off, it doesn't matter what you're wearing at all. That's not their business. You can go ahead and wear as slutty a thing as you want. You shouldn't be assaulted. Let's go ahead and reestablish that as a point, just so that there's no com confusion in my eyes or in anyone's eyes about me, personally. Wear whatever you want. If you're wearing nothing walking down the street and you're naked and someone sexually assaults you, I will still defend you. You do not get sexually assaulted just because you want to be walking down the street naked even. I mean, that's how crazy I am about it. Anyway. Did you didn't bring someone with you, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, you were walking down the street at night. I've walked down the street at night a lot of times. Guess who looks at their 6 and at their 12 every fucking second? This guy. This guy right here. He looks at his 6 and his 12 every goddamn 2 minutes to make sure there isn't someone following him. Or there isn't someone doing something. You ever walk fucking through downtown Seattle in the middle of the fucking night with a bunch of hobos sleeping around you? Have you? Have you there, uh, Mrs. Bree, whatever the fuck your name is? How do you know that I don't have the exact same feelings you do? How can you say that? Have you ever been shot? Have you ever been robbed? Have you ever had anything really bad happen to you besides these pretend circumstances that you're trying to conflagrate as being really bad? Okay, by the way, it's not your fault if you get assaulted while walking down the street, but you have preventative measures that you could take that could make it a lot less likely. When I look my way each second, I'll know if I'm about to be attacked, and I'll have a much better vigilance and ability to deal with it than the apprehension that I feel that just makes it so that I'm incapable. It doesn't matter if you're out at night or in broad daylight. Crazy shit happens everywhere. All right, it does. Okay, thank goodness. Crazy shit happens everywhere. She's admitting that. Moved. Uh, I'm Why did you move? You got the guy kicked out of the apartment. Oh, did you not get the guy kicked out of the apartment because it ended up just being a public indecency exposure? 
not a sexual assault charge? Is that what happened? Wonderful place now. I have an amazing roommate and um, Was your place before not wonderful? But when I go outside, I don't feel safe. Uh, excuse me. Why when you go outside do you not feel safe? Explain to me how I feel any more safe when I go outside than you. Are you more likely to get hit by a car? Are you more likely to, you know, have a thunderbolt hit you? Are you more likely to even be raped? Are you more likely to be the victim of violence? All of these answers are almost unequivocally no. I don't know the exact statistics on rape, but I know that you're not the most likely victim of violence. It, sexual assaults, last time I heard, one in six boys and one in five girls. That's not a huge margin. That's a lot of sexual assaults that end up occurring to both men and women. So if you don't feel safe when you go outside, well, neither does an agoraphobic. But they don't sit there and try to blame other people. Incident made me look at my life under a microscope, and yes, it brought on anxiety. It brought on a severe depression. It made you look at your life under a microscope. Did you at any point decide that that microscope might just say no to someone who is aggressively trying to sexually be interested in you? Just tell them no. Just say no. No, I'm not interested. Not maybe. Not know that you say no means yes to this person because you know them better. No. You don't know this. This is a stranger. If you had told them, listen, no, I don't want you. Let's say you had just, <clears throat> maybe you could have taught this man a social cue. Maybe when he came up and he started flinging his dick around at you, you could have said, listen, this is really inappropriate. Would you put that away? I'm not really interested in you, and I don't want to be with you. I don't think that I'm threatened by you because you're not sexually assaulting me right now. Someone that's crazier, they might be doing that. They might be a phys physically aggressively moving towards my person. But I don't think that's you. So I think that you should just go back into your apartment. I know you probably have been drinking a little bit. I'm sorry about that, uh, that you don't have anybody to spend your time with. But no, I'm not interested. Wouldn't that have put across the exact same thing as this restraining order that she ended up getting? Did she get a restraining order that said that he didn't have to move out or what? I don't even know. This is what's so crazy. Stuff she had blacked out, she made her live over again and think back on to. Is this like the basis for a lawsuit or something on this one guy that she, she's got PTSD from this I don't know that's what I'm hearing this leads me to the second sexual assault okay now she is really using that term really broadly sexual assault the second sexual assault now the first one we can all debate on whether that was sexual assault whether it's assaulting someone's mind to be obscene, but I believe that that is obscenity by all rights and measures of the law. I didn't realize was assault at the time because I was dating this person and we had already been sexually active together. Okay, so she has been dating this person and they'd already been sexually active together. She had consented to previous sexual acts. Let's go ahead. We've established that. Let's also establish that I'm sure there were times when she did not consent to previous sexual acts, and they did not do it. She was not raped previously to this sexual assault that occurred. Hey, come here, I want to show you something. Brought you into a dark room. You moved your body into a dark room with a person that you thought you trusted and maybe even loved. Let's say that again. You moved yourself, your physical body, into a dark room. You were not carried into that dark room. And I don't want to get too, I don't want to get graphic here, but he, he did something sexual to me. What is it he did? I still haven't figured. Her clothes were on. Did he come on her face? Did he piss on her? Did he shit on her? Did he spank her? What did he do? This is very bland. Here, let me tell you about a time when I felt like I was not sexually assaulted, but I felt a little sexually odd. 
I had had sex with this woman. And um, afterwards, you know, she wanted to have sex again. Well, we didn't have any condoms. I don't have sex with a woman that I don't know very well without a condom, you know, because one, pregnancy, two, STDs. Interestingly enough, those, those are the, that's, that's the way I do it because I don't want to have a child in this world almost worse than I want to kill myself, you know, from an STD. The child, you know, needs a lot more care and attention. Anyway, after that, she was sitting on my couch, and she was interested in still having sex. And I wasn't interested because I didn't have any condoms. And, you know, she wasn't like some kind of ravaging pewter or anything that made it so that I absolutely had to, right? But she was masturbating right next to me, and she wanted me to choke her while she was masturbating. Now, I've never done that before, and I was obliging because I'm a nice person, and I'm like, hey, you want to get off on this? Fine, let's go ahead, let's do it. But did I feel like that was a little odd? Yes, a little odd. If she had asked me to choke her and I said no, guess what would have happened? I wouldn't have done it. <laughs> Amazing. If you had started in the middle of this assault that was happening to you and said, listen to me, I don't want this to happen right now. You started screaming, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. No, no, no. And I mean, not like, no, no, like, fucking no, quit. Yeah, I feel like you're raping me. You say something along those lines. Huh, I wonder what he would have done all of a sudden, this guy who actually probably cares about you. Well, let's go ahead and continue. Here. something sexual to me, to me. To not you, with me. not with you, to me. Does that mean it was penetration of some type to me. What does that mean? That made me feel humiliated. It was degrading. It made her feel humiliated and it was degrading. Was she turned on at all? Was she turned on at all? Or was she just humiliated and degraded? And is there a reason why she didn't stop it in the middle of it? Because I've had plenty of times where I've been doing something with a girl that was pretty crass, and she says, no, I don't want to do this, or no, I don't want to do that, or shit, she spits it out of her mouth, you know? You don't even know. You, there's plenty of stuff that can happen that, you know, I've had things in the middle of the sexual act where we just stop. And I'm just like, you know, I don't even want to do this anymore because you've just annoyed the shit out of me. Uh, excuse me, but... There is plenty of ways to turn off the sexuality. You should be like, oh, in the middle of it, you should have been like, hey, you know, I went and talked to your mom today, and she told me about her vaginoplasty. Go ahead. There was plenty of ways to stop what's happening, whatever she said. I felt like a dog. And because I was dating him, in my head, that was my excuse. Like, my excuse was, oh, you're dating him. Know, and that's what you do in relationships. It's about compromise. Just because you're not feeling into it doesn't mean you can't neglect his needs. It is about compromise. You're right. Relationships are about compromise. But you have appeared to compromise only yourself. You didn't try to make a compromise where you said you want to do this, whatever it was. I don't know what she's even referring to. I'm not comfortable with that. Why don't we compromise on something else? I don't think she's anti-men. And this is not my parents' fault, but I, I don't think she's anti-men at all. With the notion that you have to please your man in the bedroom. That's Wow. Guess what notion I grew up with? You have to please a woman in the bedroom. Wow! What a world! We want to please our sexual partners? We got taught to be pleasurable to another person when we're sharing one of the most intimate things in reality? Who knew? You have to, you know, boys will be boys. Um, and you have to be a lady, and you have to be classy, and you... Boys will be boys, but at the beginning of this, this was a man, not a boy. You heard her say that, right? Men will be men. We aren't boys.
boys will be boys refers to what happens in a sexual nature under the age of 18, maybe. But not, maybe that's what it happened to you. I don't even know. If that's a boys will be boys thing, well, maybe it's an awkward sexual thing that he wasn't sure about. Maybe he wasn't sure whether you'd like it. Who knows? Let me show you something. He didn't know what whether he was going to even be able to pull up. Who knows? I don't know. I don't know what you're even talking about, lady, so. All right, that's not true. That's not true. There are men that will like you for this, 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 and this, and there are men that will hate you for this, 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 and this. Whatever this, 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 and this is. There are opposites. There are people that will be attracted, and there are people that will not be attracted. And unfortunately, that's how it is in society. That's how we're raised. That's what magazines tell us. That's what TV shows tell us. And that's what our parents tell us, because that's how they were raised. But it's a Okay, so she says that her parents and everyone else raised her to tell her that women, if you're not like this, this, and this, men won't like you. You know what? If you don't have a big, strong chest and nice arms and you don't have, you know, a good-looking face and a million other things that men... And look, I could have been talking about a woman. A, a strong chest? How about a big chest? All right? And, you know, fit arms. And... Shit, long hair. Fuck it. Let's just say long hair. Let's not apply that just to women. If you have long hair, you know, a woman might find you attractive. I don't see how she doesn't see that the double standard exists. The, the, the knife cuts both ways. Um, it's called gender roles. It's not the end of the fucking world. Sorry. We have time now, and this is why it's so important to speak up about these things. We're in a different time now. We're in a different time now, and that's why it's so important to speak up about these things. Were you not in a different time then? Look at this face. This face is telling us everything we need to know. Look at her. Look at the thought process going through her head before she says this next sentence. And this next sentence is... fizzled out pretty quickly. This re that relationship fizzled out pretty quickly. I wonder if it wouldn't have if you had just been a little bit more honest with him. Or maybe it fizzled out pretty quickly because you were both 15 or something the way it sounds like. Let's just be honest. And the last story that I want to share is actually the first time I was ever assaulted. And I had kind of blacked this out. i got to say, I really did not remember until my... Uh, excuse me. You blacked out both these incidences and you didn't remember them. There is a thing in psychology that says that you start to lose focus of your, your childlike, you, you know, your three to seven, you know, memories, you kind of lose at seven to 15. And at 15 to 27, you can still remember the 15 or the, the, the seven to 15, but you can't remember the three to seven anymore. So how far along are you and how far is your memory gap so that we don't even know whether or not what you're remembering is the way that it actually happened? This is the real problem with this. I can remember... I can make up a sexual assault that I didn't remember. You know, see, this that's thats just what I'm hearing. It's just, just on a psychological perspective. I don't mean to be belittling her, and trust me, I'm not accepting rape culture at all. That's, that's not something that I'm, you know, trying to espouse. Anyway. Mr. Neighbor <sighs> did that to me, and it came back to me, and having to tell my parents that was a moment I will never forget. It was terrible. I was at boarding school. I was 16 years old, and it, it's a great school. It really is. And I wish I had told someone about this, but... It's a great school. It really is. Like I said, still don't blame myself for this happening. There was this guy in, in my film classes who never spoke to me. He never gave me the time of day. Did you give him the time of day? Because it sounds like you were interested in him. The way you say in that. Um, and in the dark, she was walking to her classes. And I just see a figure coming out. And a figure. And I, see him and I, just kinda nod I wish it was a shadowy head. figure. And that would have made it even funnier. Pulls me into the, the first building and starts kissing me and touching Excuse me. He pulls you into the first building. How aggressively were you pulling away from him? I mean, like over my clothes and stuff like that. 
we heard footsteps and so we, we just casually... excuse me excuse me we heard footsteps as we were kissing we heard footsteps in a boarding school where you probably kicked out for any co you know ed behavior let's call it behavior we heard footsteps he got off and walked away he got off and walked away he got off and walked away and i remember thinking wow somebody likes me and i remember thinking wow somebody likes me because if you didn't like them back when they pulled you into a building, you would have pulled the other way. Instead of what what happened to me in my eyes is this man goes, grabs her hand, and kind of gently moves her over into a building. I'm not seeing him grab her and move her. No. I'm seeing her grab her hand and, like, scoot her over to this building so they can steal a kiss before, you know, one of the fucking teachers comes, basically, right? And that's how she viewed it, too until some interesting occurrence that made it so she's viewing it different now. But that wasn't right. Because he did it again. Uh, we were in one of the editing bays working on one of the films, and he did okay. the same thing. Someone he did the same thing. Now, doesn't that sound like a normal relationship where he's interested in you and then you never told him no or never said anything that said that you didn't want him to be kissing you, so maybe he's going to try to steal another one of those kisses? Left the room, and he pushed me up against the wall and started kissing me and touching me outside of my pants and touching that area. Somebody had started jiggling. That's interesting. He had been touching that area. Her hand never moved to push his hand away? I've had a lot of experiences when I was younger of kissing a girl and moving my hand to areas where she would move it away or she would not. There were a difference, there were, there was a difference between the woman who moved my hand away and the woman who did not. One told me, no, this is not where we're going right now, the other one said, please feel free to continue. Now, maybe I should have heard it as, hey, I'm not saying anything, but I feel like you're raping me. But I don't really see how you round the bases if you don't try to actually steal, you know? If you don't try to go and, like, touch that breast and see if it's okay and see if she says don't do that, then you won't know whether or not she's okay with it. That first awkward kiss in our relationship is very awkward because you don't know whether or not she's going to be kissing you back. And you don't necessarily go and grab her and draw her into a building or something like that, but when you do and she starts kissing you back and then somebody comes and he runs off so you two both don't get in trouble, I'm not seeing that as anywhere near sexual assault. On the door handle, it was my friend, and she walked in and he got off of me and he left. He got off of me. Like, is he on you and you're not on him at all? I'm so confused. How do you kiss, girl? How do you kiss? Do you kiss and you're just waiting for them to just put their mouth all over you? I'm really confused. Because I don't, I think that this is just attention grabbing fucking attention whore bullshit and not her feelings. Like, maybe this is just not how she actually thinks the world is I hope not because this is uh, unreal my one example of a true rape case is much worse I've had friends that were raped I've had a friend that was you know uh, raped and then he's almost bipolar and he's almost out of his goddamn mind and has to take lithium because of it I mean and this rape was just like as simple as someone putting his penis in their mouth right or his their penis in his mouth as it were so and when he was so young, he didn't even understand it. You know, I feel like when I had a massive open wound in my chest, and then this little medical doctor came in, this little Mexican woman came in, and she took her pinky and put that far of it into my chest cavity, that I was being penetrated and much more assaulted than you were in any of these conversations or any of these stories. 
And I, even when I had like a barium enema because I had to do that for my fucking ileostomy bullshit that was deal that I was dealing with at the time, I feel like that was much more assaulting to my person than anything I've heard you say. I don't know. your fucking sentence right there! Just stop the sentence! Stop it! Stop the fucking sentence! You're such a fucking normal, objective person if you stop the sentence right fucking there! It is especially harder... BULLSHIT! ...for women. I know a lot of men do go through a lot of really, really awful shit. But I gotta say... I know a lot of men do go through a lot of really awful shit, but I gotta say... That I don't understand it because I'm not them. Fucking no duh. And I'm not going to say that I understand that you might have been offended or you might feel fear. But don't you think that we were all that same person at some point? That I was a fucking three-year-old that was afraid of the goddamn dark just like you? Aren't we all the fucking same? What is in your goddamn head, woman? Especially for women? Are you fucking out of your mind? Do you have any idea how hard it is for men to? Do you have any idea how hard it is for any fucking one? She looks like she's having a real hard time. Look at all of those electric lights she has in the background just burning fucking electricity out where there's somebody in goddamn Africa that doesn't have fucking fresh water. All right, excuse me. Doesn't have fresh water. Fuck that doesn't have fresh water. Some little girl in Africa who's getting raped right now because somebody fucking thinks they're going to cure their AIDS by having sex with a virgin. How about that one, miss? You fucking got something for that? Fucking. It's especially hard on women. Not on maybe this woman right here, this first world-class fucking elitist goddamn... God, I don't even think I dislike her that much. I just am like, why is this... How is your fucking head filled with this personality? This isn't right. I already went over this before. I don't feel safe walking down the street at night. I fucking check my six every fucking second. I make sure there isn't any awkward movement around me. You want that? Go get a gun. Go get a concealed carry permit and carry a gun on you all the time. I got this little snooze, it fits right in my pocket. Yeah, right in my pocket. Fucking system of the down, goddamn, you know, uh, sugar, man. It's right there, man. It's fucking an old lady could have a fucking gun in her pocket, man. Why can't you? You could feel safe walking down the street. You want to feel so safe walking down the street that you have people cower down to you and you know that they're not a threat. That's ridiculous. You are envious of that? I'm envious of the fact that you women get to have almost everything handed to you. Almost everything. You have any idea how much harder it was for me to get any kind of grants in college? You have any idea how much harder it is for me to get a simple job, right now even? Just a simple bullshit McDonald's job. But you know how much easier it would be for a woman that's nicely make -upped? I don't know why it's easier. But that's foolish. You do not have it harder than men, necessarily. Men do not have it harder than you, necessarily. Individuals have problems. You had a problem with an individual who had mental disabilities, obviously. Uh. Alright, let's just keep going. I'm, 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 this is really dragging on. I'm trying to get through this. Feminism. Yeah, there are a lot of inequalities between men and women. To... On which side? Who's got the short end of the stick right now? On which side is there inequality? For you, you feel unequal because a man showed himself to you after you didn't soundly reject him. And instead of being an adult and saying and soundly rejecting him at that point, you had to file an assault charge or an indecency charge, whatever you was filed, we don't even know. <coughs> Excuse me, but this is ridiculous. That's, that's what I'm going for. Um, I 
I don't have oh, son of a bitch. He keeps doing this to me, man. I don't know what this Windows capture is about, but I, I don't I don't know what it's doing, but it's having fun, not not keeping it up. And I love women and I think that I think men are wonderful and I love women. Why can't you say I love men and I love women? Did did anyone else notice that? Excuse me. Yeah, there are a lot of inequalities between men and women, but that's... Here's the first one. What I'm going for. Here's the first one right here. Here's the first inequality. She... Wait. Oh, she did say she loves men. But she does have to clarify that she doesn't hate them first. They're wonderful. Um, okay, never mind. Women, and I think that... Look it. She doesn't not hate women, though. See, this is like, this is an ingrained attitude that I just want to try to express. Whenever you're seeing an opinion, even my opinion, any opinion, you need to realize that it's coming from a point of perspective. And you can find out that point of perspective based on very small cues. Like, maybe you'll say, you know, maybe I really am upset about this by the way I said bullshit to her when she did that thing where she said men and women aren't equal. Maybe that's a good showing of where I stand. People roll their eyes at a word that they don't understand. I don't want to be called a bitch or a slut. All right, you're not a bitch or a slut. You are a very, very unempathetic woman. You are incredibly unempathetic. You don't seem to understand that this man has mental disabilities. You don't seem to be empathetic enough to even be able to express your own feelings to your partner. And But you're not a bitch or a slut. You know, and... and the whole slut word. I'm not. I'm in, not into the whole slut shame. This slut's not a bad thing. It's a woman that likes to have sex. I, I think that's called promiscuous. Fuck that slut word. Anyway. Or overly sensitive. Um. If you don't want to be called overly sensitive, then I think that what you've done here is a little bit. You are overly sensitive. I'm sorry. You were too sensitive to that man, and you didn't reject him fully. You're too sensitive when he wants to be with you on a sexual level that you can't even, like, recognize that maybe there's something else happening that makes it so that he's not right in the head or in the, whatever. But you are overly sensitive, okay? Excuse me, but we are not going to redefine you as anything other than overly sensitive right now. So, I'm sorry, you're going to get that one. Slut, bitch, no. Overly sensitive, yes. And I don't want men to have to feel like they have to be tough all the time, that they can't cry, that they can't talk about their feelings, that they can't share their experiences with stuff like this, which happens all the time, but we really just don't hear about that stuff. You really just don't hear about that stuff. Well, at least she's admitting that men have the same issues. I keep bothering her in the silliest looks. And I hate the fact that, that a lot of men don't feel comfortable coming forward talking about it because their masculinity will be questioned. There are better solutions. Oh, are you saying that we're not all equal, that we're treated in different ways, that our masculinity might be, you know, compromised by such a thing? Huh. I wonder if that makes it really difficult on men for such things. Maybe the rape statistics are much higher for men, and we just don't know it. Oh. The logic is just so circular. opening up about this, if anything, has taught me that there's no shame behind the things that happened to me. I You're right! You're right! There's almost no shame. You should be ashamed at your reactions, that you were such a fucking absolute child, that you weren't able to, like, deal with these things faster. You couldn't nip it in the bud. You had to let this flower bloom into some insane fucking dark fucking image of itself. Them. I didn't choose for those things to happen. I feel no shame. You didn't choose for those things to happen, but you did nothing actively to stop it. What is the saying? The only thing for evil to continue is for good men to do nothing. You are that good woman doing nothing. To see the good in, every person. in her situation, excuse there me. Are flaws. Some people are mentally ill. Some people like the, the guy who sexually assaulted me and I got the restraining order. Oh. He is mentally ill. Yes, he is. Do you have zero empathy for that case? No. Or maybe she did, because we never heard what actually happened in the courtroom. 
she got a restraining order, but she didn't even press charges herself, I don't think. Because he would have been found as incompetent, and he probably would have been released on his own recognizance. And there's nothing we can do about that, except make it harder for him to do that to somebody else. Make it harder for somebody who's mentally fucking ill. For the future. I Make it for someone who's mentally ill to be able to control their mental illness, basically, is what she just said. But we need to control him because he's a bad man. Are you out of your fucking gourd? You just said he's mentally ill. I really do. Uh, a lot of people call me naive, and I don't care. I don't give a fuck. Um, I don't you know what a naive person would say when you called them naive? I don't give a fuck. <laughs> That's the naive approach to something. It's not giving a fuck. To want better from people. From people who are mentally ill. I think that change is absolutely possible. From, yes, except for when it's someone that's mentally ill. Aside from that, you just told them no, and they would have fucking stopped that sexual assault in both the other cases. Because they weren't sexual assault, they were consensual sexual activity that you had failed to say outwardly without just your body language that you were saying yes. You've come so far. Why stop now? Why stop and say it's just the way it is? Why try? Why Why ask why? Try bud dry. I mean, why stop now? Look at these faces I keep getting her, man. You can see what a fucking bat of fucking... It's just the way it is. I, I'm just really sick of that being an excuse. Just the way it is that mentally ill people who have a history of fucking exposing themselves to others might expose themselves to you? That's just the way it is? I'm sure that that person has been to a lot of psychologists dealing with this exact same issue, and it wasn't for the fact that they were drunk and they fucking came out at 7 in the morning to find you, you know, after you had completely ignored them over the course of several weeks and not, you know, just roundly rejected them, that they did the same thing again, not understanding social cues. To a broad level of idiocy. People, um, the world is shitty and hard for everybody. We are. The world is shitty and hard for everybody. <sighs> Guess it's just shittier and harder for some of us, huh? What about that mentally ill guy? How do you know he wasn't sexually assaulted when he was in the military? We're all going through something. We are all wired for struggle. Oh! I wonder if that mentally ill person is going through something. Our mental illnesses or physical illnesses. We can't choose our mental illnesses, but we need to protect people against this person that exposed himself to her. Can't she fucking grow up? Can't she grow up and realize that she's saying that we he can't control himself, but I need him to control himself? And he's obviously doing a pretty good job. He hasn't been jailed yet for any actual sexual assault, so obviously he's just a social cue problem, you know? This, but what we can do is treat each other with respect because we can't choose those things. So You're right! Day, Wouldn't it be nice if you had respected that man and realized that if you had roundly rejected him and told him no, that he wouldn't have been confused by his lack of social cues in his own mind? Now, I'm not, I'm not trying at all to defend this person on a real level. This is not anything like me. This man's nothing like me on any level, right? But I understand that some people don't get social cues, that they are awkward, and that they, you know, maybe never got past that point in their adolescence. But why are you special and he is not? Is this why you only got a restraining order and didn't even get any kind of fucking, you know, court proceeding that you can actually talk about where he went to jail or he had anything happen to him at all?
Why don't you treat him like a human then? Why in the world couldn't you just tell him no? Why couldn't you, even when he had exposed himself, just say, listen, I'm not interested. I know that you don't get it because you don't, obviously. You're out here drunken in front of my fucking apartment door, which is right next to yours, I'll admit, so it's not like you had to make a huge effort. He didn't make a leap to go and find her. This is not stalking by any rights or means. I'm welcome to the criticism that I get for this, by the way. Please, criticize all you want. I'll gladly respond. I'll gladly even, you know, make more videos if it were going to be something that interested people on these levels. But I just saw this. I saw Karen Strahan talk about it, and it just blew my mind when I saw it. I couldn't actually not make a video about it. So, there you go. End of story. Um, I think I put all my opinions out there. I don't believe in rape. I don't believe in rape culture. I don't like the whole idea at all. It's not a good thing. Um, you know, let me just go and to, to finish this off, I'll just go and make myself real big here. All right, so ending thoughts. What is the conclusion from all of this? Men and women are the same. Men and women have different bodies. They have different biological functions. But we all experience the thing, same things. We all have problems with the same things. And we aren't special. The man who sexually assaulted you, if we want to put it in that way, is no more special than you are. You have no more rights than he does. He was being obscene, and that was wrong. He shouldn't have done that. But it says something about you when you don't realize that what you're saying might be offensive to other people, that they may have had some real victimhood happen to them, something that was really crass and wrong, that they were not made better for by the justice system. And you equilibrate being shown a penis and taking a restraining order out on someone as being penetrated sexually. And you may not say that par se, but your intention is such. And if that's not your intention, I don't know what your intention is. All right. Well, this is Anarchy704 signing out. I hope everybody enjoyed this. going to go up on YouTube right away. That's what it was meant for. Goodbye. Come check me out on Twitter if you want. You know, Anarchy704. Shameless promotion. Boom.